Hi, this is Pat Cosgrove, and I'd like to welcome you to Cosgrove's Cosmos. In today's video, we'll be talking about our search for land that would support the construction of my observatory. Why do a video on the search for land? Well, when we started, we had a really clear vision of what we thought we were looking for. And about one year in, we learned an awful lot during that search, and we ended up shifting what we were looking for in a dramatic way. And I thought that what we learned and how this shifted our strategy might be useful to other people who are just beginning this kind of journey. So, searching for land to build an observatory. Let's get started. So we started looking for land about two years ago. We were looking for a property that would allow us to have a home that we could age into and would also have characteristics that would allow for the construction of our observatory. We were willing to find land that had an existing house on it, if that house met our needs or could be reasonably renovated to meet our needs. We're also open to looking for land that could be developed where we would build a new house and an observatory at the same time. I think anybody who was considering an observatory build would relate to our initial search criteria. We started with the idea that we were looking for about 5 to 15 acres of land uh, south of Rochester, uh, which is the city we live near, and out in the country so we could get reasonably dark skies. So why to the south of Rochester? Well, let's take a look at a map of Rochester. When you look at this map, you can see Rochester here, then above Rochester is the lake, but to the south of Rochester, there really isn't a lot. It turns into a lot of uh, farming communities and small towns, which have pretty dark skies. If we were looking for land to the north, in some ways it would be good because we could be looking out over the lake and we'd have a great view to the north. But a lot of interesting objects for astrophotography are located in the south. And as we look to the south, we're going to run right into the light dome of Rochester. Here is a light pollution map, which clearly shows the magnitude of the Rochester light dome. If we were to find property in the south, as we look south, we're looking over pretty dark areas. And so we have a perfect perspective for going after those southern objects. As we look to the north, we see the light dome of Rochester, and that would wipe out a lot of the northern objects. But the neat thing about looking to the south is we have the pole star. And we know that as the Earth turns, it centers on that. That means objects that are lost in the glow of the Rochester light dome, if we wait to the right time of year, we can capture that object as it rotates further up in the sky, away from the light dome, and we can have an opportunity for shooting it. When I'm facing north, I can see the star Polaris right in the center of my field here. But there may be objects located in this part of the sky here and lower that are going to be problematic for me. And the reason they're a problem is because as I look towards Rochester, I have a light dome that will brighten up the sky down in here, making those objects hard to see. The fortunate thing is since the sky rotates around Polaris, if I'm interested in, say, imaging one of these galaxies in here, there's no reason I can't just wait until another time of the year when those galaxies rot rotate around and now they're high in the sky away from the light dome, and they've given me an opportunity to image them. So even though in the north I have a light dome of, of a large city, I can still get access to most of those objects by strategically waiting for the right time of year. So kind of positioning yourself to the south is rather strategic. So we began our search by looking for those farm communities towards the south of Rochester. We looked for about a year, and we didn't really find anything we wanted, but we learned a few things. One of the things we learned is that the most common properties we found were converted farmland. So this was good in some ways in that there were no trees, so you had clear horizons and a great set of views. It was bad if you were going to build a house there, and you were kind of hoping to have some shade trees around, at least in some areas. So it was kind of flat, dull properties that weren't really that interesting. So no trees, no shade. The other thing we found is there was very few neighbors. If you were buying a 15-acre parcel of land, your closest neighbors aren't weren't going to be real close, and because it was a farm area, quite often the nearest neighbors were quite a distance away. So there was a sense there you could become socially isolated. The other thing to think about is if you're going that far south, you're not going to have municipal water, which means you're drilling a well. And it turns out in this area, there's a lot of limestone that we have to drill through in order to get to the aquifer, and it can be quite deep. Deep is 100 feet before you hit water, so drilling costs can be quite high. Also, since there's no natural gas feeds out to properties, you're going to be doing everything on propane, which means either you're leasing a propane tank, which can be large and unsightly, or you're buying a tank and you're burying it and having it filled. Propane prices can change dramatically, and so that's something that we hadn't really thought through or considered. 
The other thing we began to realize is to get to these areas, we are driving maybe 15 or 20 minutes south of where we already were. Typically right now, we have about a 10 or 15 minute drive to go to a nice grocery store, or if we have worst case medical services are no further than a half an hour away, and it's easy to get around Rochester with the expressway system. But as soon as you add 20 or 30 minutes going further south, suddenly going out to get a quart of milk is almost an hour trip. Medical appointments might take half a morning or more because of the drive times alone. So if we were down in the southern area and it wasn't farmland, it was actually land that had never been developed and had some character to it, those properties could get expensive. Now, this cost would go down the further away you were from Rochester. But again, that changes your drive time to services. So if it was farmland with an existing house, often these were older houses built with older ideals in terms of the architecture, which meant that the footprint laid out were smaller with small rooms and low ceilings, and renovating those could be quite expensive. On the other hand, if you had something that was undeveloped land, the development costs could get quite appreciable. Where you want to locate your house is quite a distance from the road. That really drives up the expense. There's the cost of putting in the driveway, but then there's also the cost of bringing utilities in. Uh, and these costs can get very high. So as we looked at land development, we started realizing we were going to deal with long driveways, long utility lines, the use of septic fields, having to install propane tanks, deep well drilling, and maybe setting up ponds so that you have water in case of a fire. The uh, fire department has a source to draw from when trying to put the fire out. So as we looked at these properties to the south, we were seeing some aspects that were great for astrophotography, but not so great for everyday life, or not so great when it came to costs. Also, at the one-year point, I had a bit of a health issue that raised its head. I've shared this in other posts, so this isn't news, but I was diagnosed with a kidney tumor. Suddenly, I was seeing doctors all the time. If we had been located further south, the drive times would have taken up all of our free time. Then it made me think a little bit. What if we had bought land that was 20 minutes or 30 minutes further south? What if we found a big farmer's field and built a custom house on it? We would be down there, we'd be socially isolated. And what if I had a health issue and I died? I'd be leaving my wife in a house with an observatory, which she had no interest in, where she is socially isolated, away from family, with long drives to be basic services. I started thinking, this is not a situation I wanted to put my wife in. I started to reconsider what we were doing and wondering if what we were looking for was really the right thing. As it turned out, I got through the health scare okay. The tumor was benign. I've healed from it. I'm doing great. But it did cause me to realize that what we were looking for might need to change. We're getting older. We're retired. We're looking for the house that we can age into. And looking for a big piece of land far south of the city, maybe that's not the best choice for us. As we began to reassess, we also were looking at the option of building versus buying. And in today's market, build costs are extremely high. And quite often, an existing house is a much better value. So we began to change our criteria of what we were looking for. In some ways, it was dramatic. And we started to look for a property that wasn't so far south. We were looking for something where we could manage the drive times to groceries and other services. We were looking for something in a neighborhood. Uh, we didn't want to have social isolation. We were looking for something with municipal water and natural gas so that we didn't have to fool around with testing well water, changing filters, and so on. We really were looking for an existing house because of the better value. And we we're trying to find something uh, that had a first floor master suite because that would allow us to age into it a little bit more gracefully. The other thing is we were hoping to find a neighborhood where houses had something between one and two acres. That would give us some space in order to have some privacy and some ability to have an observatory that wasn't too close to other houses. But at the same time, we would have a regular neighborhood where you could walk down the street and you could talk with your neighbors. And finally, even though we wanted all these things, we still wanted some reasonably dark skies. It might not be as dark as we could get if we went further south, but something that still would be suitable for the astrophotography, which I wanted to do. We kept our southern strategy. Our current location has reasonably dark skies, and I've been pretty happy with the images I could get here. The problem we have is trees. I just don't have much access to the sky. We also are conveniently located. We can go to a grocery store in 10 minutes, and in worst case, medical access is about 30 minutes away. And often it's closer and more convenient. So we started to look near where we live now, trying to see if there's any properties that might work out. We realized that our change in search criteria uh, really represented a lot of compromises. 
We were compromises, the peak dark sky site for my astrophotography, with something that would blend into our social needs and something that would be suitable for my wife should something happen to me. And we decided those compromises were the right ones for us. A lot of people might have made different compromises, and that would be great for them. But these were the compromises we decided we had to make for where we wanted to be at this stage in our lives. I think others would look at this and have a totally different take, and that's just fine. Last October, we came across a house that was only 2.7 miles away from our current home. We actually are close to a fairly large county park, which helps with some of the dark skies. And in this case, we ended up finding a property just on the other side of that park. And it happened to be a, an even quieter part of the country, even quieter part of the park. So that was kind of attractive. It was in a really nice neighborhood where the average property was about two to three acres in size. So while we had neighbors, they weren't super close neighbors. The property had a first floor master bedroom suite, had a first floor office that would work great for my wife, and it had a bonus room over the garage, which would make a great astro man cave, and I've already made a video about that. And so we decided this could work out. When we looked in the backyard, the backyard was fairly large. It was ringed by trees, and more importantly, it kind of went up a slope. And when I walked into the backyard and got to the peak of the backyard, I realized I was higher than any of the houses in the neighborhood. And I was somewhat buffered by a line of trees. And first off, as it was, I had a much bigger section of the sky that was available to me than anything I had in my current house. And as I looked at the property lines, a lot of the trees that were there that were blocking my view a bit uh, were on my property. So I have the option of removing those trees or bobbing those trees to improve my views. And the view to the south was just great. So here's a video that shows the property. I walked up the hill and I took some video with my phone to show what the skies look like. So let's take a look at that now. This is looking north and we have some trees up in here which will reach up a little bit. Those trees there I can remove as well as that one which will open things up. Some of the trees over here I can remove which will open up that part of the sky a little bit. But as I look south, I really have a pretty good open chunk of sky there. This is about 50 paces back. So we saw that property in October of last year. We put in an offer and we got the property. We closed on the property in middle of December. And at that point, we started to do some work on the property before we moved into it. We moved at the end of January. And once we moved, we ended up doing some work on the old house, getting it ready for the market. The move itself was a little traumatic. We were in that house for 32 years. It's amazing how much junk you not only get, but you squirrel away in every corner in the house. And as we prepared to move, we realized we needed to downsize. We got a 20-yard dumpster. We completely filled it. And then we had a lot of things that we donated to Goodwill. In retrospect, I wish we had two dumpsters that we had filled. And we gave away even more because the move was still an awful lot of stuff. And uh, it would have been nice to uh, have downsized even more to make the move a little bit more easy to deal with. In the last video in this series I made, I talked about the design of the observatory and the fact that I had a plan. With this video, we can talk about the fact that we now have the land. How do we put these two together? Now that we're in the house, we're mostly unpacked, how do I actually start executing on the observatory? And that's going to be the subject of my next video, so stay tuned. Thanks so much for spending some time with me today. As always, I welcome questions and comments both on this channel and on my main website. So for Cosgrove's Cosmos, this is Pat Cosgrove signing off and wishing you clear skies and excellent seeing.